to get some business news for you now. Kate Moody is back with us in the studio. Hi there, Kate. Hi, Laura. And uh, we're going to talk more about the uh, US midterm elections. They are, of course, being seen as a referendum on the Trump presidency. And uh, he and the Republicans have been talking a lot about how well the economy is doing. Absolutely. We've heard him touting it over and over. Uh, low unemployment, strong economic growth. He says they are the fruits of his policies. But the boom is part of a broader global upwards trend. And not everyone in the US is feeling the benefits. Ellen Gainsford takes a look at the state of the American economy. During his campaign for the presidency, Donald Trump pledged to put America first. But has his unique brand of economic nationalism paid off two years down the road? By many measures, the US economy is booming. Unemployment is going down, following a trend that started under President Obama. It's now at the lowest level since 1969. Economic growth surged to 4.2% in the second quarter of this year and remains strong at 3.5%. Boosted by Trump's cuts to corporate tax under his 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. But as the amount of money going into state coffers has gone down, the budget deficit has risen, expanding to an estimated $782 billion in Trump's first full fiscal year as president. Some critics of the president's policies warn that the U.S. economy is riding a sugar high. They say that the recent increase in growth is partly down to companies rushing to secure products before trade wars worsen. Trump's tariffs have proved to be one of his most controversial tactics at home and abroad. His main target has been China, a country he accuses of unfair trade practices. On the international stage, Trump has steadily torn up trade deals withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and forcing a renegotiation of NAFTA. But it's how his policies are being felt by everyday Americans that's about to be put to the test. Economic growth is no guarantee of midterm success. And you can see more analysis in our latest People and Profit, which focuses on the midterms and what's at stake. That's online now at France24.com. Now, investors around the world will be keeping a close eye on those results and what they could mean for international policy and trade in particular. Wall Street is trading slightly up as voters cast their ballots uh, a little under an hour of trade to go before the closing bell. Remember that after an initial drop, stocks actually rose sharply after Donald Trump's victory two years ago. Big businesses then welcomed his promise to lower corporate taxes. That overhaul since then has now contributed to bumper profits and record-breaking trade on the markets this year. Whether that will continue remains to be seen. Earlier on, European markets closed down. The CAC 40 was down about half a percent. Uh, the FTSE 100 nearly nine tenths of one percent. New data showed eurozone businesses had gr grown slower than expected in the month of October, uh, hitting a two-year low. EU finance ministers have failed to reach a firm deal on a proposed tax on tech giants. France had been hoping to push through a framework by the end of this year. But after opposition from Ireland, Sweden and Denmark agreed to push back its time frame, possibly to 2020. Owen Barnell explains. Holding digital giants to account. In Europe, it's proving a difficult task. Talks between EU governments broke down on Wednesday. With current tax rules failing to target the activities of digital giants like Google, Facebook and Amazon, and voter anger over the company's low tax bills, the EU is struggling to catch up. First, our taxation system needs to be updated to reflect the economic realities on, of the 21st uh, century. Our economies are uh, increasingly digital and uh, the trend is uh, here to stay. Uh, second, there is a risk of fragmentation uh, or in the single market along the lines of the digital tax. Uh, Coordinating tax policy across the block is hard enough already. Countries vary widely in their current corporate tax policies. France has pushed for a 3% tax on revenue rather than profit, which would impact companies with a global turnover of 750 million euros. But Ireland, Sweden and Denmark are dead against it, saying it would harm Europe's ability to compete globally and believe the issue should be addressed on a wider level by the OECD. France and Germany had hoped to reach an agreement by the end of the year. Now ministers have agreed to delay, possibly, to 2020. If the impasse continues, Spain, Italy and the UK have signalled they will go ahead anyway with their own national tech taxes. 
From Detroit to Saint-Denis, the investment bank J.P. Morgan Chase is expanding its philanthropic urban development program with a 26 million euro investment in the greater Paris region. The money will help teach job skills and professional training and support small businesses, specifically in Seine-Saint-Denis, just north of the French capital, and other areas with high unemployment and low wages. On Tuesday, CEO Jamie Dimon visited a training centre near Paris with the French Labour Minister, where they said that cooperation between the public and private sectors was crucial to help future generations. The government cannot do it alone. Companies and non-profit networks must be involved. Government can't train these kids. Government can't offer them all jobs. Uh, we need local business, and we need to work with civic, with civic partners here, like Luc Pagnon, who've done an outstanding job. They educate 10,000 people a year to get good jobs. And that could be done in every bad part of every city around the world. And our, our investment hopefully will double that. France is actually a relatively small base of operations for J.P. Morgan. Only 200 of over 250,000 worldwide employees are based here. Uh, but it is worth remembering that Saint-Denis will be hosting a number of events for the 2024 Olympic Games. Uh, and so, Laura, without wanting to sound too cynical, it does seem like a rather visible platform uh, for that very good deed to take place. Convenient timing, you're saying? All right. <laughs> Kate, thank you very much indeed. Kate,